Good evening, everybody. Uh, I'm Bill Dawson, Superintendent of Schools, and I'd like to welcome you to our Meet the Candidates tonight, and thank you for coming out and supporting ECS. It's my honor to introduce tonight's moderator, um, Patrick Longo, Member Relations Manager with the New York State School Boards Association, has worked in education for the past 20 years as an English and Communication Instructor at colleges in Schenectady and San Francisco. As an administrator of K-12 and collegiate workforce development and after-school enrichment and continuing education programs. He's also served as Director of Client Services and Talent Acquisition at a transportation logistics software provider for school districts. He's a published professional development author and recognized public speaker for topics such as leadership, culture, change management, organizational development, and talent development. Mr. Longo received his BS and MA in English from the State University of New York at Rockport. Please welcome tonight's moderator from the New York State School Boards Association, Mr. Patrick Longo. Good evening, everyone. How are you tonight? Sounds good. Uh, I was just telling Mr. Dowsland, actually, I spent a half year here, uh, right leading up to my, my wedding. Uh, many years ago, I was doing an IT project uh, at Colgate University, so it's good to be back. I started to tell my then fiance that I felt like when I came back here, I was coming home, and when I was going back home, <laughs> I was going away. So it's good to be back. Thank you. Uh, this bill actually provides schools uh, across the state with three things primarily: with advocacy, uh, training, and information. Uh, we are usually the typically the main wing of professional development for school boards. And we thank you on behalf of my uh, executive director, Bob Schneider, and our president, Peggy Zugabee. Thank you for having us here. We really appreciate it. Uh, we want to give a round of applause for the people who are uh, committed to their civic service. Um, if we can just give a round of applause for the candidates. So each stage of the night, I'm going to go over more or less the ground rules, how much time the candidate has to do specific things. Um, we're going to start with introductions. I'm going to introduce the candidates. I'm going to be reading their bios. Uh, the bios are written by our candidates, so if you hear I, it's not me and the ventriloquist. I'm speaking for them to their bios. Okay, so I'm going to read each candidate's bio now. First up, we have Tom Turner. Tom, can you wait? My name is Tom Ferner, and I'm asking for your vote to serve on the HCS Board of Education. I'm a parent to two young daughters and an uncle to many nieces and nephews that attend or will be attending in the near future. Many of the taxpaying residents may recognize me from my family's small business in Hubbardsville that I've helped run for the last four years. As a parent and active member of our rural community, I am deeply disturbed by the increasingly evident divide in our district. During my time helping run the family business, I've engaged in countless conversations with other parents and residents from all walks of life. One of the most common complaints is the blatant disregard and understanding of the issues by the current board members. Many residents have encouraged me to run as we share a vast amount of the same ideas, concerns, and solutions that may differ from what is presently happening in our school. If elected, I pledge my undivided attention to all taxpayers, parents, staff, and students. I will strive to bring an unmatched amount of transparency on budget and social issues, as well as encourage accountability overall. I look forward to the opportunity to serve my school and community. Round of applause. <laughs> Next up, we have Song Chat. I'm a proud parent of two young children, with one in kindergarten in the Hamilton Central Schools. I'm running for HCS's Board of Education to represent this great community and contribute to the incredible work that goes into our schools. I grew up attending public schools in Central Ohio, and I went on to be the first in my family to attend college. Today, I'm an independent IT consultant specializing in state policy implementations. I began my career in IT as a con constituent relations manager for the American Friends Service Committee, a nonprofit social justice organization in Philadelphia. Then I shifted to public sector work to build IT solutions for state social programs in Georgia, Michigan, Maine, and New York, and tax revenue management in Ohio and North Carolina. 
I would be honored to serve on the school board and to have the opportunity to give back to the public education system. I believe in continuing the work at HCS towards building an equitable and inclusive environment for our students. I also believe that improving education is an ongoing endeavor that requires strong leadership, teacher support, good communication, and family engagement. Thank you. Okay, next up we have Travis Ames. I'm Travis Ames, father of two and husband of an elementary teacher. I grew up nearby and moved into the district 20 years ago. I attended SUNY Morrisville, obtaining a woodworking business degree. I've worked locally since then for a family-owned architectural millwork company. I began being actively involved with HCS 10 years ago, and I've attended almost all board meetings in that time. I've established respectful working relationships with the other board members and administrative team. I'm proud of the work we've accomplished together. I'm also proud of our amazing faculty, staff, and students. HCS consists of parts of five townships, each unique in their own ways. Likewise, my background has provided the board with a diversity of thought and experiences. This has allowed me to initiate meaningful conversations leading to awareness and equitable decision making. My priorities have been fiscal responsibility, the safety, physical, and mental health of students and employees, student achievement, opportunities, and inclusion, and policy development. Together as a board, we've made great progress in these areas of focus in very difficult times. If re-elected, I'll gladly continue to volunteer my time and work hard to further achieve these priorities and more. Thank you. Okay, next we are giving each candidate five minutes to present their platform. I want to remind the candidates that tonight I am monitoring, but this is not a debate. Uh, so if we can actually answer all questions and in your views and your statements, uh, stick to what you wish to do for the Hamilton Central School District, okay? And we're gonna start first with Tom. Five minutes. Good evening, I'm Tom Ferner. Thank you to everyone who could make it out tonight. I'm a father of two daughters in Hamilton Elementary, as well as an uncle with several nieces and nephews who are or will be attending HCS in the future. My family has been heavily involved in the FFA program as well as attending HCS for the better part of 70 years. In the last four years, my sister-in-law and I have been operating a small country store in Hubbardville. This has afforded me the privilege of engaging and gaining the trust and friendship of a large variety of people. I've become a sounding board for the community, not because I have the answers, but rather I simply listen and acknowledge them. As our country and community has changed so much over the past few years, the divide that has been created is enormous and growing rapidly. Well, talking to parents, I have been met with many of the same conversations and concerns that always lead back to the lack of trust and safety in our school. The rural residents in our district feel left out, forgotten, or like many have stated more than once, second-class citizens. The number of residents that tell me this school does not care and we are not in the club is just sad. As someone who is tries to be a friend to all, I have been approached by multiple community members to run for this position. Not for my educational background. I have no higher education. I started at the bottom in life, and everything I have is through hard work and common sense. I know the value of the dollar, and I know how to get every penny in full budgeting. With the ever-rising cost of living, this skill is one that I find to be extremely valuable. I am not going to sit here and pretend I have the answers to many or maybe any of the upcoming questions if I have not been involved. This is how I am getting involved. Being elected to the board would open up the club, and yes, this is looked at as a club by the rural community. I also believe that being on the board would help bridge the gap between the rural and village communities as well as giving a fresh set of eyes and ideas that are not the same old way, but rather seen by someone who has always been told, we are the outsiders. After speaking with staff, it was surprising to learn the amount of disrespect they must deal with from students. This so-called hands-off approach is not working. Stories of students walking out of class, cursing at staff, spitting, hitting, all with no consequences, but rather they are being rewarded or bribed into behavior. 
We are at a breaking point for teachers. I feel that the coming years, Hamilton Central will have a massive teacher shortage. As someone who is in the public daily, I would be able to bring attention to parents about issues happening in our school. It has been expressed to me over and over again that someone like me would level the field and would help keep the rural community in the loop. I will strive to keep all residents up to date on what is happening, not just the rural community, but the village as well. Another reason for one running is one that I hold close to my heart, the mental health and well-being of our children. We all, as adults in the past few years, have contributed to the mental health crisis in our children. No matter the politics, feelings, or squabblings over who is right or wrong, it's on all of us. The time has come where we all need to focus on finding a solution to this. I don't care if it's depression, anxiety, gender dysphoria, bullying. We all have let, all we have left is the future for our children, and right now we are letting them all down. What bothered me more is when the candidates were announced, I was immediately approached by political figures at my work that are in this community. This shows how deep politics run in this school. <coughs> politics have no place in the school, and it needs to stop. A school is a place for students to learn, not to be subjected to a political agenda no matter what politics are being pushed. Another goal of mine is to further promote OSI's program and help to promote trade schools after graduation. We need to help instill the fact that college is a great path for certain fields of work, but we need not think that is the only way. We need to also be teaching how to survive in the world after graduation. Let's set our kids up for success and not instant and ever-growing failure. I will confidently say that after announcing my candidacy, the outpouring of support I have received is tenfold what I expected. Business owners reaching out to me to show their support, but also saying they fear supporting me in public because of politics. From the lower income residents to the multi-millionaires that I serve on a daily basis, all walks of life in between have reached out to me saying it's about time somebody actually said it to them. It's upsetting that any of this needs to be said, but here we are. The longer we put the issues on the back burner, the more it will fester. We are at a crossroads at HCS, and it is time we face these issues head on. Why is spending so high? Why do we not have adequate security measures for our staff and students? Why are our children not getting the mental help they need? Why are our children making no up rules instead of following the rules set forth by this administration? Why are we afraid to talk about the tough issues? Now, I hate that this statement has sounded all doom and gloom, but it is just words that needed to be said. I will still say that I believe Hamilton Central produces some of the most well-rounded young men and women, and I am proud to say that my children attend here. I look forward to the opportunity to work as a team to find the solutions to the problems that I have been so vocal about. Thank you. Son, five minutes. Uh, thank you, Superintendent Dowson. Thank you to Mr. Longo for moderating. Thanks to Alice and Tom for your time here tonight. I'd like to thank the Hamilton Central staff for organizing this event, and thank you for everyone for being here tonight. My name is Sung Wan Che. I go by Sung. My wife and I live here in Hamilton, and we have two young kids. I'll be an ACS parent for the next 15 years, so I'm thrilled and honored that my community has nominated me to the school board. I'm a self-employed IT analyst and project manager. In my job, my main responsibilities are turning policy into practice and making sure large projects are funded, that are funded by the taxpayer money finish on time and stay within budget. In my free time, I coach soccer, ASO soccer, and take my kids to t-ball, swimming, and other sports activities for the kids throughout the year. Often, you'll find me chatting with parents about kids and the schools not just about elementary school, but the middle school and the high school as well. Hamilton is a small town, and my wife and I are fortunate to have made a lot of friends here with kids of all ages. Having this opportunity to run for school board is especially meaningful to me because the public school system has had a big impact on my life. I believe in giving back to the public schools. I grew up in a low-income household without access to great education. Then in seventh grade, I entered ESL, which was a turning point in my life set me on a path that enabled me to achieve my academic goals, which would not have been possible otherwise. I believe that every student should be able to find the support that fits their needs, and that is what I want for ACS. Amanda Phillips, who's the writing candidate, says it best. We all want what's best for our kids. As I do in my personal and professional life, I bring a problem-solving mindset to school-related issues. I, bring, I believe that I would be a good fit for the board and I would be honored to represent the Hamilton Central community on the board. 
If I were to highlight two things on my platform, the first thing has to do with students and the other has to do with teachers. I'm interested in the social and emotional well-being of our kids, making sure students are engaged in school in a meaningful way and that they're equipped to pursue their educational goals. We need to do that by finding ways to keep our programs funded beyond the next academic year as the pandemic comes on now. And we need to do that in a fiscally responsible way. I'm also interested in recruiting and retaining good teachers by keeping our school competitive through teacher support and finding solution, solutions for the foreseeable staffing challenges. Our community is dynamic, and there are new issues every year. And that, what I'd like to do is continue to make our school district better, and that takes active work. And I'd like to be a part of that work. Hey, Travis, five minutes. Hello, everyone, and thank you for coming. My name is Travis Haynes, and I'm seeking re-election to the Hamilton Central School Board of Education. I grew up in a neighboring town and attended SUNY Morrisville, where I received a degree in furniture production and business. Since then, I have been working for a local family-owned architectural millworking company. That's woodworking, because it's kind of a fancy word. For the last 20 years, I've lived in the Hamilton School District. My wife is an elementary school reading teacher, and we have a teenage daughter and a two-year-old son. I started being involved with HCS around 10 years ago, and when my daughter, when my daughter began pre k Before becoming a board member, I was on a handful of school committees, and I volunteered my time in many ways to different classrooms and programs of study. I soon developed an interest in school board meetings, and I have actively attended almost all board meetings these past 10 years, the last three years as a member. Routinely attending meetings for this time has resulted in a wealth of historical knowledge that, I've been, that I have been and will continue to be able to translate into my board member service. Being a board member means volunteering countless hours of your time, often taking you away from family, social, and work commitments. Yet, I find this work to be rewarding, and I know that I'm making a positive difference for the school. Over the years, I have developed trusting relationships with my fellow board members in the administration, this has allowed me to be an effective board member, and together as a team, our board has accomplished many positive things during my time on it. An effective board member builds on a consensus through trust and respect. When we, put, when we work together, we are able to achieve our agreed upon goals and priorities. Our school district includes parts of five townships. That being said, it is important for board members to understand and listen to everyone. My background has enabled me to provide the board with a diversity of thought and experiences. I do so by initiating and contributing to many meaningful conversations, leading to a broader awareness which results in fair and equitable decision making. In that same spirit, when opinions and ideas come up in these discussions, ones that differ, differ from mine, I do not dismiss them. Instead, I take the time to learn more about them. Admittedly, sometimes by doing so, I change or compromise my stance. And that's okay. That's how a board interactions should operate. My priorities as a board member have been fiscal responsibility and oversight, safety, physical, and mental health, student achievement, opportunities, and inclusion, and policy development. I am aware that many people in our district are on a fixed income, that people are facing difficult times financially. This is why I've been a strong advocate for fiscally smart decisions. I've been an active participant in our audit committee and I've emphasized the importance of fiscal oversight. We've also made it a point to identify, then limit or eliminate potential liabilities on the district. When I began my service, it was shortly after COVID. Throughout that process, health and safety took center stage. Coming out of the pandemic, our focus on health and safety has been broadened. We have put an emphasis on mental health and social and emotional learning, using funds to secure new positions, programs, and protocols to help encounter these issues both proactively and reactively. Physical safety has been at the forefront in recent years as well. We have made progress in this area, and all that board members have strived to work towards a common goal. We approach safety with a holistic approach. There are many layers to achieving safety within the school. I have been an advocate for student achievement and inclusion for providing equitable opportunities. Among other things, I've pushed for expanding extracurricular opportunities and to offer access to students with varying interests. 
I'm proud to be involved with the expanding opportunities for students so that every student leaves the school with the tools they need to succeed in life. Regarding policy development, I am a member of our policy committee. This is where the vast majority of my time as a board member has been spent. I have had an active role in, our, in developing many of the draft policies that our committee works off of. An example being the revision of our library and textbooks policy, policies last year. This year our policy work has been mostly spent on finishing up the state required diversity, equity, and inclusion policy. We have put this policy at the forefront and it will benefit students and families for years to come. We are also at the tail end of totally revising our student code of conduct policy. Our new code of conduct will spell out restorative practices approach that we have already put into place. Together as a board, we've made great progress in these areas of focus in very difficult times. If re-elected, I'll gladly continue to volunteer my time, volunteer my time, and work hard to further achieve these priorities and more. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. We're going to move into the question and answer period. I want to highlight that these questions were submitted by the community. Uh, some of them overlapped, so we adjusted them just so that there was no redundant questions. You may hear some of the very same things that they said in their bio or their opening or their closing statements. This gives each person to uh, expand upon some of the things you've already said. And again, I just want to remind you, it's not a debate. If you can, just stick to answering the questions that are presented to you. Uh, I will start here with Tom, but then I will mix them up so each person doesn't have to be you know, the first person to go while the other two candidates actually hear the question and have time to think about it. So I will round robin. So I'll present to you who's going to answer the question first, second, and third for each question. Sound good? Okay, folks ready? Okay. Number one, I'm going to start with Tom. Uh, please briefly discuss your interest in running for a seat on the school board and what personal or professional experiences you might bring to the board team. Well, I think as a as I said in my statement, um, the, the, the people in the, the rural community, and, th and this is nothing new, it just, it just seems like nobody's ever come out and said it out loud, maybe. Um, they, they feel left out, and, and we feel different. We feel less than the village itself, and it, it's time that that needs to end. And I believe me, me being on the school board, somebody that the people in the rural community trust, I can, I can bridge that gap. Uh, just something, need, it, it needs to happen. We are, we are more divided than we ever are, and if people, people don't see that, well, I'm sorry, but we are, we've been living in a bubble, but it, it's, it's getting worse quickly, very quickly. And I'm just trying to do my part to help help quell what the future may bring in our community. Thank you. Thank you. So, do you want me to read the question again? Yes, please. Okay. Briefly discuss your interest in running for a seat on the school board and what personal or professional experience you might bring to the board team. Uh, thank you. Uh, my interest is really just wanting to make improvements in the school district and wanting to be a part of uh, all the work that goes into the school district. Um, the, the work that I'm really interested in being part of is that we've seen a lot of great initiatives happen in the school district this year uh, with SEL, the Social and Emotional Learning Program, uh, the support in uh, the collaborative overseas programs, expanding the special education, uh, we've hired a new social worker and the restorative practices training that's happening with the teachers and the students and the uh, implementation of the diversity and inclusion policy. Um, these are really great programs that uh, we've seen happen here at uh, ACS. Uh, I'd like to see those programs, see what's working for the kids and if it's working, uh, continue to fund them and find ways to fund those programs. Um, the next year and the year beyond, years beyond. Um, with the pandemic funds running out after next year, uh, we need to be um, coming up with very creative solutions for um, providing funding for these programs, but also being 
uh, physically responsible. The professional experience that I bring, uh, I, most of the projects that I work, I'm an uh, IT contractor, and, and more specifically, I do um, an analyst and a project manager on programs. My main responsibility is making sure that projects that are funded with taxpayer money are completed on time uh, and within the budget. Um, I work with policy uh, a lot uh, in my work, uh, specifically to do with um, state code regarding Medicaid, SNAP, uh, as well as uh, uh, tax code as well. So uh, there's a lot for me to learn coming into this school district, but I think that uh, those are um, um, experiences that I can uh, bring to the board uh, and contribute in that way. Okay, thank you. Travis, would you like me to read the question again? No, I think I got it. Thank you. Okay. Um, so my interest uh, is, um, let's see, um, I've always been student-centered. It's all about the kids, and I think that's number one for all of us, right? Um, you know, I'm biased, but I have an appreciation for teachers. Um, you know, I mentioned my wife is a teacher. Um, Many members of my family are retired from all kinds of positions uh, in the um, public school system. I've always had a deep, you know, uh, appreciation for the public school systems and all that goes into it. Um, and, you know, I have kids, so those are kind of the interests that got me interested in the first place. Um, work experience, that was the second part of the question. Um, you know, I'm a woodworker. Um, it's manufacturing, but it's kind of construction at the same time. Um, I meet people from all walks of life. I hear their, you know, gripes, essentially. Um, so, you know, people from all walks of life. Um, my, my work involves teamwork, incredible quality control, and just an attitude of you can't accept no, and just have to get this job done and figure out how to do it. Um, you know, budgeting. A lot of the projects I work on, you know, they have a higher price tag than our school budget, so, you know, that takes commitment. Um, probably most importantly, problem solving and critical thinking skills. Um, what I work on doesn't come with instructions. I have to figure out how to do it and I have to work with people. Um, also, in the school we have, you know, facilities and capital improvement projects, and I've found that my work experience has been a huge asset. I've been able to help the administration and board digest information that we're getting on, you know, the scope of work. And I've helped guide this process forward. And during all of our architect, you know, presentations, I've been able to really ask a lot of good questions. Thank you, Pat. Thank you. Uh, we're going to go on to question two. So I'm going to start with you. About two minutes. How do you define the role of the school board? You want to start with me? Is there, I didn't hear you. Yes, this is okay. yep. How have you defined the role of the school board? Uh, the school board's responsibility really is uh, quite simple. It's uh, budget oversight um, and uh, setting policy and uh, hiring a superintendent uh, when we need to. Uh, but there's a public facing uh, role as well for the school board members. Um, uh, we are community members uh, who are uh, connected with uh, our neighbors and friends and other parents. Uh, we're role models, models uh, we're leaders, uh, and uh, we have, uh, we're responsible for actively listening to the community and taking all the voices into account and making decisions for uh, the school. Um, the, uh, what you want, in, in, in my view, what you want in, uh, in a good uh, board member is somebody who's a leader, who's a good communicator, who's able to work with uh, the administrative staff here and work closely with uh, the superintendent uh, to set goals for uh, school annually and uh, have a vision for the school as well. Thank you. Travis, do you have two minutes? What was the role? Role question again? You have the role of the board? Yeah, how do you define the role of the school board? School board or school board members? School board. Okay. 
So uh, the role of the board include, um, you know, uh, you set the district's immediate and um, long-term goal. You uh, you align strategies, administrative resources, policies, programs, and processes with the district goals. You uh, assess and account for student achievement uh, using data and open communication. And as mentioned, you uh, hire, appoint, and evaluate the superintendent. Um, you know, it's important for people to realize that board members have no authority over school affairs as individuals. We only have authority when acting as a body. Um, some other roles of the board are, uh, you know, you have to come to meetings, and, uh, appoint members to all board committees, um, just in general, yeah. So the role of the board is you set the, the what for the administration, and they take care of the how, and after that, it's basically just oversight. Um, we're not here to nitpick, we're here to just set the goals and see that they're followed through on. Okay. And Tom, to you, two minutes? Uh, yeah, I put in pretty much everything the board does. Um, but I do think, and I'm not saying it, it should be me personally, but you should have people from every area of your district on the board, a person that represents every area of your district. That way we, 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 we don't get to such a point of division. Um, you can see things from the point of view of somebody that makes seven figures a year and somebody that barely makes $30,000 a year. Um, it's just time that there, there's somebody somebody from each walk of life, not, uh, not what it's been thought of for a long time, is just people in the village that control everything. But yeah, it's, it's, as these two men said, everything they said is, is what the board does. That's, there's not really more you can add to that. Okay. What's up? Yeah. Thank you. Okay, Travis, we're going to start with you on this one. Okay. This is the third question of the night. What do you see as the biggest priorities, challenges, or opportunities for the Hamilton Central School District? Ooh, um, the biggest priorities for the school district is um, next year's budget. Um, so, um, Next year's budget, uh, right now we're fully funded. Um, if you really look at the formula, we're overfunded. The, um, no one's really sure what's gonna happen with Foundation Aid next year, which is a big part of our budget. Um, also, a lot of the COVID relief funds are expiring. Funds that we've put to great use to tackle a lot of the um, mental health and social emotional learning um, issues. We, couple employees, a lot of programs, training that's used through that funding, and that funding ends, I believe, the end of next year. So the challenge is, how do we retain those things? Because they're needed, but everything else is needed too. And we're really not getting any answers, you know, outside of the school as far as if that funding will come again in any form. So the, the, the funding stream is a big unknown and the budget process begins very early on. And that's gonna be a really, that's the priority. It's gonna take a board that has experience and is proven to work together in order to achieve that the district moves in the right direction. Okay, thank you. Tom, two minutes. Would you like me to read the question again? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. What do you see as the biggest priorities, challenges, or opportunities for the Hamilton Central School District? I would say, as I, I stated a couple times, one of the, the biggest priority right now is mental health for our children. And uh, as Travis said, he mentioned mental health. 100% agree with him. And the budget, yeah, that is huge. That is 
above all, the biggest priority without that, you cannot take care of the mental health, you cannot take care of the safety, you cannot take care of anything. And as Travis said, there's no guarantee on what's happening next year. Um, he's right. You have to, uh, a team is going to have to work extremely hard to find the money. I, I honestly don't know what you cut. Cutting is the last thing you ever want to do to cut any type of anything. I don't believe in cutting things out. Um, I think that that's the biggest uh, problem facing facing next year's the budget because people are uh, people are upset with the rising taxes. They're upset with everything. People simply don't have the money to pay their taxes anymore. Uh, so yeah, there's going to be it's going to be a huge juggling act trying to figure this out. It, honestly, alone, I, I don't know. That's why you're going to work with me real hard, real hard. Thank you. You all set? Yep. That's okay. So, two minutes. Would you like me to read the question again? Uh, no, <coughs> thanks. Um, yeah, I'm gonna uh, reiterate um, uh, some of the similar things and add uh, uh, teacher recruitment in there as well. Uh, social and emotional well-being of our kids in the school is, I think, um, uh, first and foremost, uh, the probably the, the most important issue that we need to sort of focus on in the next year. Um, the social emotional learning program I hear is, is quite successful this year. Um, that program is going to be funded going into this ne next academic year, which, um, which is a really great thing. Uh, it's going to help a lot of kids, uh, it's going to help a lot of families, and it's going to help um, uh, kids sort of uh, have that uh, little more uh, motivation and a little boost to uh, be engaged in the classroom and come to school and um, and, um, and um, make up for any loss um, uh, educational time that they might have had through the, uh, the past uh, couple of years with really difficult times. Um, we also are facing uh, we're going to face some um, staffing challenges going forward as well because of the teacher shortage that's happening in the line. Uh, we also have some unique challenges in <coughs> Hamilton that kind of um, adds to that problem as well. Um, uh, we do stand out in the region um, uh, as, uh, as a unique district. Uh, I think we have a lot of potential here. Um, and we need to be actively recruiting and retaining good teachers um, and providing them uh, good teacher support and professional development uh, so that they have, um, they're thriving in our district as well and uh, they have job satisfaction working in our school district. That's time. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, we're going on to our fourth question. Aslan, can you start with this one? Serving on a school board requires the ability to work collaboratively with board colleagues who might not share your point of view on an issue or matter before the board. What is your philosophy in working with others who might not subscribe to your viewpoint or hold a divergent opinion? Um, I think that is a good thing. and I think that means that you're in discussion with uh, your, your colleagues and uh, the people who you work with on the board. Um, what you want uh, for all the board members to be doing is to be listening to the community, to be actively connecting with friends and neighbors, other parents who have children in, in the schools uh, at all uh, age ranges, and, uh, and listen to the community needs because those are changing every year. Um, there are times when the board needs to make tough decisions. Uh, there are also times when uh, the board may uh, vote uh, with a majority of board in one way in disagreement with a minority. And uh, individual board members may disagree uh, with certain board actions as well. 
Um, but the school doesn't stop running, and we're all advocates for the school. So, uh, with so many things going, that are always going on, we need to find ways to move forward in those situations. Uh, what I found inspiring is that there, when there are important issues, parents never stop advocating for their children, and they continue to be involved uh, in uh, steering committees, come to board meetings, attend school functions, talk, talk to teachers and principals, and uh, they also uh, vote on board elections. Okay. And Tom, um, do you have any question again? Yeah. Okay. Serving on a school board requires the ability to work collaboratively with board colleagues who might not share your point of view on an issue or matter before the board. What is your philosophy of working with others who might not subscribe to your viewpoint or hold a divergent opinion? Um, I, I think it's a great thing to work with people who don't share the same point of view. Because uh, many, many times, you take both your points of view, put them together, you can come up with something even better. And even if it's something you don't personally like, it might just be necessary. That's the path you have to take for financial reason, whatever the reason. You don't, it doesn't have to be my way or the highway on anything. And it shouldn't be. We, uh, we keep growing, growing really, really well if, if we all just keep working together. The board, the board's been working together well. I might not agree with a lot of things that have happened in the past, but they were here to do it, and they worked together to do it, whether they agreed or not. They got things done. So I think it's it's really good to work with somebody that's got a different point of view. Anyone else? Yeah. Okay. And Travis, you want to read the question again? Yeah, if you could. Certainly. Serving on a school board requires the ability to work collaboratively with board colleagues who might not share your point of view on an issue or matter before the board. What is your philosophy in working with others who might not subscribe to your viewpoint or hold a divergent opinion? Hmm. All right, so I kind of covered it in my open, but uh, my philosophy is basically to not just hear them, but to listen to them. Uh, compromise when needed, find a general, consensus. Um, it's important to early on, you know, mutually set your goals so you have something to shoot for. Um, civility, that's the big one. Don't be combative, rather work to understand each other. And individually you have to put in the work. You have to study hard, you have to read books, you should attend trainings when you're able to. This allows you to, you know, show your peers that you add value and they'll seek your opinions, and likewise, you will seek other opinions. Uh, you know, I, I have run into experiences where I have disagreed with my peers, um, and you know, there's, those have actually been the most rewarding parts of my board service at SOM, because you're able to engage in just a, like a respectful dialogue, and it's amazing when you have respect for somebody, and listen to them and you you're agree to compromise and you know that everything's for the student that you're able to just great things happen and you end up just having a wealth of respect for people that you know you don't always agree with their opinions and that's that's great the board shouldn't always be an echo chamber there should always be a diversity of thought and um, that's a good thing okay all right, we are at the halfway point. We just went through four questions. We have four more. You folks all set? You want to take a sip of water? <laughs> take about 30 seconds. You've all stayed within the, the five minutes I gave, the two minutes I gave you, so thank you, I appreciate it. Okay, all set. All right, Travis, we're gonna to go to you. This is question number five. Can you describe defining attributes and characteristics which make a good school board school board representative? I didn't quite hear that all the way your field board. Can you describe defining attributes and characteristics which make a good school board representative? Oh just a good character. Um, Somebody 
who isn't dismissive of other thoughts, somebody who is a hard worker, um, somebody who's able to admit when they made mistakes and take the steps needed to you know, rectify them or learn from them. Um, you know, any work experience you can bring to the table is always a good attribute. Um, caring personality. Trying to do your best. Yeah. I always kind of go into the board work with like, a, what would Mr. Rogers do when he slip? And it's been pretty helpful. So whatever Mr. Rogers says, I'll do. Okay. That's that. Okay. Thank you. And Tom, you next. You want me to read the question again? No, we do. Okay. Uh, you know, somebody who's a good listener, hard worker, somebody fiscally responsible, uh, somebody that's not afraid to to spend the extra time, all the extra time it takes, no matter how many hours it takes to get to the bottom of problems, questions, finding answers. Uh, yeah, and somebody that that can work as a team, kind of like Travis was saying. Um, even if even. If, even if you don't like the, the point of view, we're, we're, we're all stuck here together. We've, we've got to make it work. And uh, yeah, I've uh, personally, I've had to work with people. I don't agree with them anything. And at the end of the day, you come out doing a better job than, than when you went in or you do by yourself. So I think those are good qualities. Good qualities for Okay. And some in two minutes. Would you like me to repeat the question? Ah, no, thank you. Okay. Um, I think a board member uh, needs to be a leader, a good communicator, a problem solver, a critical thinker, uh, and somebody who uh, listens to the community, the parents, guardians, families, uh, the community members, taxpayers, as well as the students. Um, and is able to make decisions um, uh, collaboratively uh, and uh, with the best interest of the kids in mind. Um, I believe that a board member should also be able to uh, give voice to uh, those who might not have a voice otherwise. Um, you know, those could be uh, uh, other parents uh, who uh, want to be a part of the board but might not be able to. But also, uh, it can be students who uh, are marginalized, uh, who might be discriminated as well, uh, based on their gender, race, disability, social or economic status, or religion. Um, uh, has to be the board member, the board member needs to be open minded and be able to listen to all these voices and uh, really understand the community needs um, in order to make uh, sound decisions for the school. All set? Okay, thank you. Okay, we're going to move on to question number six. Uh, Travis, we'll start with you on this one. It is not uncommon that board members might hear from community members on any number of issues, concerns, or complaints from community members. How do you see your role as a school board member in addressing concerns and complaints? What was the first part of it? It's not uncommon that board members might hear from community members on any number of issues, concerns, or complaints. How do you see your role as a school board member in addressing concerns and complaints? Okay, so that's kind of a two-part thing. Um, for the most part, if somebody comes up to me as a board member and has a concern that they share with me about the school or something happening in school or even something good happening. Um, I'm pretty much bound to tell the superintendent and the rest of the board that they need to know too. From there, you know, I, if I'm not familiar with the subject or the concern, I might, you know, dig into it a little bit. That doesn't mean going to a teacher. The only person that a board member should go to is their superintendent. Anybody below that, 
not your product. It's not your product drawing. It's not what you do. It's micromanaging. Um, and you know, you make sure that you know externally you follow up on things, and if it comes to an actual public meeting, you have that information to work on. Uh, when things come up to the board as an entity through an email and a meeting, um, these things are worked through from here. Sometimes they're you know asked through the superintendent to look into this, take care of this. Um, the big thing I hope everyone understands, and I know it's hard sometimes how communication works, but um, no matter what your concern is, the tone of which you bring it to a board member or the board or the district, your voices are heard. Um, unfortunately, a lot of times it's, there's a lot of laws and regulations and reasons that we can't communicate these things to you. And that's one of the hardest parts about being a board member. But listen and follow up. Okay. Thank you. Tom, would you like to answer, ask the question again? It's not uncommon that board members might hear from the committee members on any number of issues, concerns, or complaints. How do you see your role as a school board member in addressing these concerns and complaints? Uh, well, if somebody came up to me, Personal, uh, personally came up to me all by myself to ask me anything or if any type of complaint, I would have to go through the proper chain, take it to the to the superintendent, take it to the board, tell them, take it to the board. I uh, I don't believe it would be right of me to give any type of answer to any problem anybody's having because it's not my responsibility alone. Responsibility of a parent to bring to the board. And um, I just think it'd be. I wouldn't be doing any favors by going off, prom making promises, I'll get to the bottom of this or this or that. Because that's just, that, that's not how it works. There's a proper channel you go through, and I would direct people to go that direction. Yeah. So, yep. Yeah. Thank you. So, would you like to the question again? No, thank you. Um, I think the, the place to start would be to understand what the concern is. Um, often, um, parents, community members will come to board meetings and uh, raise uh, issues. Um, uh, because that forum is there, and we invite uh, the community to come and participate. Um, but uh, parents bring a wide range uh, of issues, and it's really important to understand uh, whether that's uh, uh, directed towards the board or with the administration, uh, what truly the concern is. I think parents generally just want to know that their voices are being heard, and, uh, and when they raise concerns, they just want to know uh, what to expect. Um, Board usually follows a procedure, um, and uh, parents understand that. But um, there are two things that can always be improved. Uh, policy needs to be clear. Great policy is ineffective policy, and the board's goals need to be aligned with the community needs. Uh, communication and transparency are important in creating that two-way dialogue, which is very important. Um, some issues may not fall into the may not fall into the purview of the board, in which case the administrative leadership uh, should be there to communicate with families um, in an open and transparent way. And there are times when these things happen, there are times when they do not, but each time it happens, the school can build a stronger relationship with the community. All set? Thank you. All right, we're going to move on to question number seven. How do you define the role of the school board when it comes to curriculum? Additionally, what role do you believe parents play in this process? I'm going to start with Travis on this. Three in a row. So, the role of the board and the role of the parent. How do you define the role of the school board when it comes to curriculum? Additionally, what role do you believe parents play in this process? Okay. Um, the Board of 
education supports and encourages the development of a district-wide articulated curriculum that conforms to the state mandates and is responsive to the needs of children in a rapidly changing society. Um, the school should be responsible um, for developing district-wide efforts for the short and long-term improvement of curriculum instruction. And if that sounded robotic, that's because that's what our policy states. Um, we did, um, it was kind of a board initiative two years ago. Um, I'm not sure how many of you are familiar, but um, the curriculum maps have been just totally dove into, and I, they're on the website. Um, that was kind of a role that we took up. Um, so in the role, the other part of that question is a lot of the curriculum is determined by the state. Um, your testing, you know, I'll be honest with you, we had a teacher presentation a while ago, and uh, the teacher was talking about all the great things they were doing in the classroom, and I asked, you know, one question. I said, how, how hard is it to balance instructing what you want to teach, what is part of the subject, and teaching what is on the test? And they said, you know, honestly, if they lose a couple points on the test, that's okay. I'm like, and I really like that answer. Obviously, we want to be test grades, but you know, we want a curriculum that is teaching the best stuff. As far as the parent, um, yeah, the parents should be involved, and that kind of starts here with open communication, um, concerns when they come up. Um, there are different ways of expressing um, complaints if you have it, um, but parents should absolutely be involved in kids' education, and that's the case. Thank you, appreciate it. So, we'll go to you next. Would you like me to read the question again? Uh, yes, please. Okay. How do you define the role of the school board when it comes to curriculum? Additionally, what role do you believe parents play in this process? Um, the, board, the board's role mainly is to uh, set policies with the meet the state requirements, but also uh, it, we have opportunities to exceed those state requirements as well. Um, we, our interest is really to make sure that the kids are getting a comprehensive uh, education and uh, they're empowered to uh, pursue their uh, educational goals. Um, the parents usually simply uh, want to be involved in their uh, kids' education. Um, and, uh, parents aren't necessarily interested in uh, setting the curriculum, but want to be a part uh, of uh, what's going on in their students' lives, uh, want to be connected with the teachers and understand what uh, the goals are for their student uh, academically uh, in any given academic year. Um, as long as there's communication and uh, parent involvement, and uh, and the parent is uh, feels empowered to um, support their kids at home uh, with what's going on at school, um, I think that um, parents would be satisfied uh, knowing what's being taught uh, in the school. That's it. Tom, do you have a question? <laughs> no, that's okay. Uh, there's not really much more I could add. As I, as I said in my opening statement, I have not been involved in the past. Um, there's not a lot I can say, say to answer this, except for I, I do agree that parents should be, should be more involved in seeing what their children's curriculum are at home. I'm sure there's a lot of parents out there that that have no idea. No look, not because they're not because they would be turned away from seeing it. They just, they just simply don't. And I think uh, more parents should do that. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, this is the last question. 
We're going to start the same way we started at the beginning of the night. Tom will start with you. We'll move on to Sonny and to Travis. This is our eighth question. Diversity, equity, and inclusion are topics of discussion in our public schools. What do you see as the board's role when it comes to diversity, equity, and inclusion? It's the board's role. The last one's the parent's role. Yeah, I guess it's a it's a board role to uh, yeah to help make sure everyone feels included. Maybe not at a hands-on level in the school, but if teachers are seeing seeing things they think is uh, not inclusive to everybody, they should be bringing it to the board, and the board should be looking at that. I don't know if that has happened or hasn't happened. I'm not judging on that. Um, yeah, that's about all I can say about that. That's all I got for you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. And Saul, so, would you like me to read the question again? Uh, no, I, the, you said, uh, what is the board's role? Is there a parent's role component to that question? This one was the board's role. Okay. Um, the board's role is, um, is really to set that policy and make sure that um, we are um, uh, providing uh, uh, the uh, living up to the, the vision of the diversity and inclusion. Uh, it's an important discussion we must all be having together, and it's about creating a school environment that works for everybody. Uh, I've heard from parents who say that uh, we need better, um, we need to do better with kids who pursue uh, trade programs. I've heard parents who say we need to do better in sports. I've heard parents who say uh, that we students with learning disabilities need more support. I've heard parents who feel that uh, we need to do better academically. All of these things uh, are part of um, a healthy educational system. Um, diversity, uh, the diversity needs of our students reflect the diversity of the community. And we need to serve the, our students in, in the way that fits their needs. All set? Thank you. And Travis, would you like me to read the question again? I would select the stall. Can you read it? Yes. Diversity, equity, and inclusion are topics of discussion in our public schools. What do you see as the board's role when it comes to diversity, equity, and inclusion? All right. So much of the board's role is kind of defined by the state. Schools have been tasked with developing a diversity, equity, and inclusion um, plan. And the next board meeting will be our second and final read for our DEI policy. That our policy committee has been hard at work at. Um, <clears throat> we were given from the beginning two draft policies we could work out of, and they're they're different. And we said, you know what? These are okay on their own, but we can do better than this. So we took a full year of just revising this policy. We sent it back and forth <clears throat> through different channels for feedback. Um, part of our DEI policy includes an inclusivity committee, a committee that is made up of a vast group of people from the community. And they are tasked by this policy with um, looking at things, suggesting things, reporting things. Um, so, there's much confusion about DEI, DEI, and here's what it means at HCS. It means that every student especially, but staff member, community member, when they come into the school, they should feel safe and welcome. And it's the school district's responsibility, the board's responsibility, to make sure that that happens. Um, you know, we mentioned it's all kinds of stuff. It's trade schools. I've been a big pusher for trade schools. Um, making sure our guidance department is fit to, you know, any student wants to go anywhere. The school used to put flags of colleges up where students were going for. And, you know, I went to a college, but I looked at trade schools, and it's like, what if I was in their shoes? And does my trade school have a banner? So every student should be celebrated this equally. Um, you know, a lot of people throw in a sense of belonging when they talk about DEI, and that's, that's very important. 
Um, so the board's role is to just follow mandates by the state, set plans, and just make sure that this is a safe environment for learning for the students. Thank you. All right, we are going to now finish. We have 15 minutes, five minutes each for each candidate. Uh, for your closing statements, and we're going to go in the opposite order than we started. So, Travis, we'll start with you. You have five minutes, and uh, just as I've been doing, I'm just going to raise my hand if you're getting close to the time. Okay. okay. How long do we have? Five. <coughs> five minutes. Okay. So, uh, thank you for moderating. Um, really appreciate it. Thank you all for coming out. Um, I appreciate you taking the time to listen to the three of us tonight, and thank you to the community for all the great questions. Um, I really appreciate all the um, comments and um, concerns that have been brought forth tonight. Um, I haven't made you any promises or pledges tonight or three years ago that I can't deliver on. Instead, I have tried to illustrate to you tonight that I am a free thinker, and it is the children that are the determining factor in all the decisions that I make as a board member. I didn't come onto the board with any agenda or animosity. That's not how you drive the district forward. That's how you drive away great staff. That scenario has played out in neighboring school districts, and I don't wish to see it here, because we're above that. I know exactly what it is that a board member can and can't do. I know how to individually and collectively continue to guide this district forward. So why should you consider voting for me? Perhaps you haven't agreed with all my answers tonight. Perhaps you've been told things about me that don't quite match what you've seen from me here tonight. Here's the brunt of why I would ask that you consider voting for me. I come with experience. I feel I've been effective, and I feel that I've proven my worth. As I mentioned before, the coming years are going to be extremely difficult and complicated for future boards to and the district to navigate. It doesn't mean that it can't be done, it just means that it's going to be tough. As I mentioned, the development of the 24-25 budget is going to be a hard one. There are so many factors that are out of our hands and they're going to force the board to make some very difficult decisions that are not going to please everyone. So we're going to need to listen and use that in our decision making. It takes a new board member a good year to adapt and settle into their roles. That's not coming from me, that's coming from NISBA, I believe. There is so much work for the board to do, next year especially, right off the get-go that electing two brand new board members in my opinion, might lead to compounding difficulties. Add to that that the longest serving, most experienced board member we have will not be returning. And while I'm on that subject, I'd like to thank that board member for all of her time and skill set that she has brought to this board. Um, I've learned so much from her. She's been a great asset and she's going to be missed. I wish she was up here too. Write her in if you wish. Um, add to that that the, okay, I got that. Um, I hope you've seen that I care deeply about the HCS. I strive to make the district the best it can be for the students and staff. And I've cherished these last three years, and I will gladly serve another three if the public so chooses. If elected, I will reach out to the other elected member, whoever that is, and welcome them to the team. And I'll work hard to find common ground through a trusting and respectful relationship and welcome them to the team. Um, how much time I got? About a uh, minute 20. All right. So, uh, student voice, I think I've expressed that. Um, talked about uh, all the equitable things that I bring to the table. And uh, what I really haven't been able to share much about tonight is um, what I love most about being a board member is all the work on policy, policy development, policy making sure it's implemented right. 
But when I got on, I came in with the philosophy in terms of board policy of if we're not following board policy, we either change the board policy or we follow the policy as written. And that's, that's been really important. So in closing, um, thank you all for your time tonight. Thank you for your vote if you so choose. And thank you all regardless of who you choose to vote for, for being a supporter of our children because that is what it's all about. Our children are our future, whether they stay here in Hamilton or move or whatever. We're in a global society now, so it's all about the children. And we're all in this together. So I thank you all again, and I would really appreciate your vote. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Appreciate it. Tom, you have five minutes. <coughs> Excuse me. I've lived in a few places in my life, and I really think Hamilton is a special place. The community here is truly warm and open, and everyone I know is involved in one way or another is constantly making us a better place. I can walk through the village and spend a good part of the morning just chatting with people because everyone in this town seems to be a people person. And that's how I've met a lot of my neighbors here. Building community is a truly great thing to impart on our children, and that's why I love Hamilton. If I want to look forward to what kind of education my children are going to get, I just need to look how the kids in the upper classes are doing. And if I want to raise the expectations for my children's education, the district as a whole needs to be uplifted. By communicating, collaborating, and caring for one another, we can set an example for our kids that we can work through any challenge. Awesome. Yeah. Five minutes. Great. Um, just like to thank everyone that came out, everyone that supported me along this way. No, I, I don't know exactly what board members, the particulars of the job, but that's why I'm doing this. I want to help. I want to be a different side of things. I'm willing to put in whatever time is necessary to do the job. That's how I was raised. When you had a job to do, you figured it out. It didn't matter if it took you all night, you figured it out. And I'm not doing this just for my children, I'm doing it for everyone's children. Because the children that come out of this school, they are our community in the future. They're the ones that are going to be taking care of us someday. So that's why I have deep interest in all of this. Um, yeah, my family just, we've got deep roots here in Hamilton, and uh, it's just time to, to stop complaining about what other people have done, what other boards have done, even if I haven't agreed with what the board we have presently has done, I still want to say thank you to them because they were doing it when no one else wanted to do it, and they didn't do that ahead of a job, even though we could sit and nitpick and this and that, at least they were there doing it. And I just want to help be part of the process. Thank you. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Let's uh, give a round of applause. For that, I guess I want to thank you for having us out here uh, again. Uh, one thing I want to mention, uh, we do advocacy uh, for your communities through, through your board. And one of the things we consider advocacy is actually being a cheerleader. And we have recognition programs uh, for districts across the state. And we were here twice this past year, only one month ago, uh, where your district was recognized for the Cultural Caring Award for NISPA and also applause for the cause. So no matter what we think of each other as adults, I think we all can agree that we have great kids. You have great kids in this community. Uh, you're a great community, great district. Again, I want to thank you, and thank you for your potential uh, service on the board and what you've done already. And we look forward to seeing the results. Good luck with everything. Thank you again so much. Appreciate you having us out here. Have a great night, everybody.